Welcome to Adobe Photoshop CC. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the basics of RGB versus TMYK. So I have here two images open in Photoshop. One is a RGB image and one is a CMYK image. If you look on these little tabs here, it actually tell you what they are. You have RGB and then it has an 8 after it. And then uh, over here, we have a CMYK with an 8 after it. And what that means is if we go to the image mode here, you can see that CMYK is checked and it's 8-bit channel. Uh, basically, as these channels increase, you basically get uh, larger color ranges, uh, essentially. Now, there are other types of modes. There's lab color mode, multi-channel, RGB color, uh, index color, duotone, uh, grayscale, bitmap. There's lots of different modes here that we're going to... and color modes that we're going to explore in the future. But right now we're going to focus just on these two basic ones, the CMYK, which is this one here, and the RGB. Now if we go into the channels palette right next to the layers, you'll actually see the individual channels. And we have here one that says red, one that says green, one that says blue. If I click on the top, it's the composite showing you the entirety of the image. Now if you click on each one, you're looking at them like, what is going on here? They're not red. Like that red is not red, it's grayscale. You know, same with green. Green is not green, it's grayscale. Blue, it's not blue. And you might think, what's going on here? Well, the reason why Photoshop sets this up by default is because you can utilize these channels for other purposes. For example, masking. You can determine what uh, channel has the greatest contrast. In this example, it's the blue channel. And you can isolate the sky through a, a, an adjustment layer uh, or a static adjustment and basically create a mass to separate out and isolate the sky. So that's why they have them in grayscale. If we look at the CMYK uh, image under the channels, it's the same thing. They're each one in grayscale, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And each one has sort of a, a degree of luminance level where one gets a little bit darker in certain areas and certain areas are a little bit lighter. And again, when you click on the composite, you get all the colors here. Now, if you want to see them with the colors, you can. You can do that by hitting Control K or Command K on the Mac to open up your preferences. Uh, they're usually under the Edit menu for PC under Preferences. On the Mac, I believe it's under uh, Photoshop menu. Go down to Preferences. And what you have to do is click on the Interface option here. And then check this little box here. It says show channels in color. As soon as you do that, they will appear in color and then you can click OK. So now we can explore them as separate individual channels with their uh, assigned colors here, as you can see, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So what is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black? This is the traditional four color print process where basically you printed uh, with transparent inks you can actually do this uh, with color separation and screen printing and actually print the same process. Now typically you printed the yellow channel first because it's the lightest and then what you would do as I'm going to turn on the eyeballs here you would print the next color uh, which would be the, le the least darkest one which would be the magenta and where they overlap other colors would appear in this sense the orange here and then you would add the cyan which would give you additional colors and then finally the black. Now this is considered a subtractive process because essentially you're subtracting the light of the paper as you're adding additional ink on here. That's sort of the one way to think of it. Now if we go over to RGB you'll see here uh, again layers, channels. We have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Now the way this works it's additive. If you add all three pure colors of red, green, blue, you essentially get pure white. That's what would happen here. So, uh, and, and typically this is used for uh, monitors, displays, anything digital basically. Your cell phone, um, you know, and any kind of video, anything on a, a display would be in the RGB color mode. Now, if I select one of these and then add the eyeball, you'll see something interesting. Red and green, we have yellow. If we select all three, obviously we get the composite, but if we choose uh, red and blue, we get magenta. And then if we choose uh, green and blue, 
we get cyan here. So you'll see a correlation, actually, interesting correlation, between the print colors and the display colors of a monitor, which is CMYK versus RGB. Now, typically, you want to work in RGB with uh, any kind of photos. Eventually, if you want to print, typically, you want to leave them in RGB. Uh, you can switch to CMYK. However, if you're sending your images to a printing company, you would want a preference. You know, what do you want? Do you want it as a CMYK image? Uh, do you want it as an RGB? And sometimes they want it one way or the other. So just understand that. Now, for most printers, actually, uh, your own t personal printers, uh, it prefers the RGB mode. CMYK will give you a, a closer representation of what it would look like in print, uh, but overall, typically, we keep it in the RGB mode. So that's basic overview of RGB and CMYK in Photoshop CC. Until next time, cheers.